previous video, we concluded the Liturgy of the Word with the homily, creed, and prayers of the faithful, sending us out to be doers of the Word. Now the Liturgy transitions to the second part, the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And just as was the case for the Liturgy of the Word, this second part follows the same threefold structure. The congregation is called in and prepared with preparation of the gifts, given a gift in the Eucharistic prayer and communion, and sent out with the final blessing and dismissal. In this video, we will look at the first component, the preparation of the gifts, the time when the presider collects the contributions and sacrifices of the congregation to be transformed into the gift of Jesus himself. Beginning immediately after the conclusion of the prayers of the faithful, the altar is prepared to receive the gifts, with the servers placing upon it the corporal, purificator, pall, an empty chalice, and missal. While this is happening, the collection begins among the congregation. Practically speaking, this is simply an opportunity for the church to raise funds and to receive gifts for the poor, such as food and supplies, but it has a much more spiritual and liturgical significance. Accompanying the bread and wine used for the sacrifice, the collection is processed to the altar. And while it may seem more practical and expedient just to have all of this prepared prior to Mass and placed on the altar, this gesture serves to symbolize the congregation's participation in the sacrifice. From our own personal lives, our possessions and wealth, come what is necessary for the Eucharistic meal. The inclusion of the collection in the procession also serves to represent the personal sacrifices and prayers being offered to God. In this act, we offer physical gifts, but also our spiritual concerns, our pain and suffering, and our hopes for a better world. For this reason, it's important that the collection not immediately be taken to a vault or storage room, but actually be brought together and received at the altar. This does not mean, however, that everything brought forward should be placed on the altar. Given the nature of the altar as the holy place wherein the sacrifice is offered, as a rule of thumb, only what is necessary for the celebration should be placed upon it. Flowers, food for the poor, homily notes, songbooks, religious images, or other sacramentals may be brought to the altar, but they should be placed next to or in front of it so as not to distract from the sacrifice itself. The bread and wine are, of course, placed on the altar itself, but not immediately. The act of placing gifts on the altar, while in one sense practical, is also a symbolic act that concludes the receiving of the gifts from the congregation. Because it is the role of the presider to gather from the congregation the gifts of the sacrifice, it is his role, and his role alone, to pray a prayer of thanksgiving over them and place them upon the altar as sacrifice. For this reason, rather than holding the gifts high above his head as if offering them to the Father, the presider simply holds the bread with two hands, just above the altar, and says the prayer of thanksgiving to the Father. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. The prayer may be spoken aloud for the congregation to hear, to which they would respond, Blessed be God forever, or if a hymn is being sung, may be said quietly. Afterwards, the presider places the patent in the center of the corporal where it will stay untouched until taken up in the Eucharistic prayer, before moving on to the wine. Taking the chalice, either on the side of the altar or at a credence table, the presider or deacon pours the wine and adds a little water, saying a silent prayer. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. What's interesting about this act is that it shows how liturgy develops over time. What has become a spiritual act to remind us of Christ's twofold nature, human and divine, and how his death and resurrection leads to our own theosis, coming to be like him, it began for very practical reasons. In ancient times, the wine was just too thick and strong and needed to be cut with water. Once prepared, the presider acts just as he did with the bread, thanking God for the gift of creation and places the wine in the center of the corporal. The congregation, once again, responds appropriately. At this point, having been placed on the altar, the gifts received from the congregation are now referred to as offerings. While they are not yet the consecrated body and blood of Jesus, their character has certainly been changed and reverence is now appropriate. The priest bows profoundly to the altar and prays privately to God that the offering may be pleasing. To heighten the solemnity of the Mass and call attention to the pleasing sacrifice, the presider deacon may use incense over and around the altar, invoking the congregation to stand for incensation as well. After this is complete, or in the event that incense is not used, the presider turns to his side and washes his hands. 
In another example of practical necessities taking on spiritual significance, the presider washes his hands, praying from Psalm 51 as a symbolic act of preparing himself to be worthy to pray the great Eucharistic prayer, asking God to wash away his sins. But in the beginning, this was an act literally to wash his hands. He had just received chickens and money and all other gifts from the people, and his hands were actually quite filthy. Once all of this is done and the congregation is standing, the presider calls attention to the offerings on the altar and invites the congregation to join him in praying over the sacrifice, invoking a dialogue to which the people respond, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. In what might be the most important dialogue in the whole Mass, the congregation once again speaks directly to the presider, not God, affirming what has been offered and gathered, and essentially gives the presider permission to offer sacrifice on their behalf. These are extremely powerful words, serving as a climactic end to the preparation. At this point, the congregation and presider are joined together in acknowledging what is before them, having offered their own personal prayers, and having declared it their will that God be with the presider to pray on their behalf. Now the table is set, the roles have been determined, and everyone is ready for what's next receiving a great gift.